This video will show how to derive efficiency for an engine. Efficiency is defined as 1 minus the cold temperature divided by the hot temperature. The diagrams and equations that you see here should already be familiar to you from prior studies. You've probably looked at isothermal curves, adiabatic curves, the Carnot engine and the Carnot cycle, but since this material is needed, I'll review it very quickly before doing the derivation. The Carnot engine is represented schematically by this diagram showing a reservoir of heat with temperature T1. The heat Q1 is used to obtain some amount of work minus W, shown negative right here because it's flowing out of the system. The remaining heat Q2 is dumped to a cool reservoir at temperature T2. The pressure volume graph of the cycle has four states and four paths. Paths 1 and 3 are isothermal, and paths 2 and 4 are adiabatic. At the end of the derivation, the equation for the efficiency has only the two temperatures, T1 and T2, and those are state variables and are path independent. Therefore, the efficiency equation is typically considered to be general to any heat engine. I've written out the first law just for reference purposes, so energy U is going to be equal to heat Q plus W work. The first process from state 1 to state 2 is isothermal. Therefore, delta U is zero because in an ideal gas, energy is only a function of temperature. Now, by the first law, that means that Q1 is going to be minus W, which is nRT1 times the log of V2 over V1. The process from state 2 to state 3 is adiabatic. By definition, Q is 0, so if you follow the first law, delta U has got to be equal to W, and that's going to be CV times T2 minus T1. The process from state 3 to state 4 is again isothermal. Delta U is 0. Q2 will be minus W. That's going to be NRT2 times the log of V4 over V3. Make sure you understand the directionality of this process. Volume final is V4, and volume initial is V3. Shortly, the initial and final process values will matter. Also, there's only two temperatures around the cycle. T1, T1 for the first process, see if I can spot it right here, T1 for the first process, and T2 for the second process. So remember, the first process is the whole top part of the cycle. Second process is the whole bottom part of the cycle. There's four states, but there are only two temperatures. The process from state 4 back to state 1 to close the loop is again adiabatic. Q is equal to 0. Delta U is equal to W is equal to CV times T final is T1 minus T2, which is T initial. And so this process 4 is exactly the opposite of process 2, and they will tend to cancel one another. All right, so let's see what we can do about the derivation. Let's write out what we're going to try to, try to derive. So efficiency is going to be equal to 1 minus T2 over T1. In other words, T cold over T hot. Now, that's our goal. That's, that's where we're headed in this, in this derivation. We'll see how we do. Uh, to start, what we'll say is that efficiency is going to be equal to the sum of the work around the cycle divided by the heat that we put into the cycle. All right, and if we look right up here, you can see that the sum of the work, since, since CV times T2 minus T1 cancels out with CV times T1 minus T2, those being the same magnitude but of opposite signs, the sum of the work is simply going to be Q1 plus Q2 over Q1, over Q1 right here, and that that would be equal to 1 plus Q2 over Q1, Q2 over Q1. All right, so let's write Q2 over Q1 and see if we can uh, simplify this expression just a little. We know that from just looking from process 1 and 3, 
we know that we're going to have nr t2 times the log of v4 over v3, v4 over v3, and that that is going to be over q1, which is nr t1, times the log of v2 over v1. Now, you can see that the nr's are going to cancel. That's not a problem. And we have t2 over t1. We needed t2 over t1 if we're headed for that efficiency. But it's positive, and we need it to be negative. And what's more, we have these rather ugly-looking log terms, which we need to figure out how to get rid of. So let's take a step back and remember about an adiabatic step, even though we're mostly, these two are the isothermal steps. Let's just take an adiabatic step in general, of which we have two here. We know that P initial times V initial to the power of gamma is equal to a constant, which means, of course, that it's also equal to P final for that step times V final for that step, also to the power of gamma. And this is where gamma is equal to Cp over Cv. And I'm not going to go any further into that right now. Just We're going to call this constant gamma and assume you know about adiabatic steps. Now I'd like to make the standard substitution. So we'll say where P is equal to in RT over V. We'll substitute in for P in both of these terms. So that's going to be something like this. I'll have in R T sub I V gamma over V sub I is equal to, and I'll again have nr, this time I'll have tf, final, times v, f, gamma, don't forget that was an i, over vf, all right, and that in turn, I can, I can knock these out, all right, that in turn will give me something like T sub I times V sub I to the gamma minus 1 is equal to T sub F times V sub F to the gamma minus 1. I simply noted that, that V sub I, if it's brought into the numerator, is minus 1, and V sub I times of, to the power of gamma times V sub I to the power of minus 1 is going to be the same as V sub i to the gamma minus 1. All right, now let me just rearrange this very slightly, and we will say that uh, T sub i over T sub f is going to be equal to V sub f over v sub i, and of course that's still going to be to the power of gamma minus 1. Now I've brought the cycle down where we can refer to it because I want to use this result with the initial and final temperatures, the initial and final volumes, to build an expression from this real cycle. So what we're going to say is that Initial temperature, T1, remember T1 is the top part, over final temperature, T2, for the particular step going from uh, 2 to 3 is going to be equal to the final volume, well that would be V3, over V2, the initial volume, of course it's to the power of gamma minus 1. So now let's do the same thing for the other adiabatic step, going from 4 to 1, from volume 4 to volume 1. So that one starts at temperature T2, that's our initial, 
and it ends at temperature T1, that's our final. That one is going to have a final volume of V1 and an initial volume of V4. Of course, that's still to the gamma minus 1. All right, so now I'm close to what I want, but, but not quite. Let's take this one, just for the fun of it, and invert it. Let's invert that one. So that inverts to, and that would be T1 over T2. That, of course, would then be equal to uh, V4 over V1. And I really didn't change the gamma minus 1 at all. That's still the same. So this gives us the rather interesting result that V3 over V2, which is this term up here is T1 over T2. V4 over V1, this one down here is T1 over T2. Uh, that sort of means that uh, V3 over V2 must be equal to V4 over V1. All right, or you could invert these, and then that would be V4 over V3 is equal to V1 over V2. Now, that is beginning to get us somewhere. So if we, if we look back up here just a little bit, we initially had Q2 over Q1 being the log of V4 over V3, because a T2, and T1 times the log of V2 over V1. But down below, we had V4 over V3 equal to V1 over V2. Since these are logs, we can just invert this and get V1 over V2 and put a negative out in front of it. So if we come back down, I can write something like uh, Q2 over Q1 is going to be equal to uh, T2 over T1, right, times the log of V4 over V3, V4 over V3. And down below, instead of writing uh, V1 over V2 or V2 over V1 or whatever, I can write that this is going to also be V4 over V3, because V4 over V3 is equal to V1 over V2. We used to have the opposite, so we have to put a sign, a negative sign out here. So that's going to mean that Q2 over Q1 is going to be minus T2 over T1, T2 over T1. So efficiency was equal to 1 plus Q2 over Q1. So that means efficiency is going to be equal to 1 minus T2 over T1. That concludes the derivation. I appreciate your watching and hope you check back. Thank you.